Today we're going to be talking about Running Wild. This is a movie that's going to be screened at the uh, Sedona International Film Festival tomorrow at 9 a.m. and on Friday at 12.20. We have the producer and director and the uh, uh, original music composer for Running Wild, Suzanne Mitchell and Steve Poltz. Welcome. Thanks for talking to us today. International Film Festival, of course, is where we will be seeing your offering. Uh, Suzanne, a little bit, producer and director, Running Wild. Uh, wild Horses. Wild Horses, an old cowboy, and the most beautiful piece of land in South Dakota that anyone has ever seen. And when I saw it 20 years ago, or 22 years ago now, I knew that there was a movie that needed to be made about this man and this magical place. So this is really about the New West and an old cowboy, right? It's about the New West, the changing New West, and an old cowboy who's trying to preserve part of what we've always had, which was open space where wildlife can run free, where mm -hmm. a man can truly be alone, where cell phones don't work, and where power lines don't you know, mark the property. Mm -hmm. That's what this land is all about, and saving this land with its ancient petroglyphs that have been, you know, put there millions of years ago by the Anasazi Indians and, and the canyons and putting the horses on this land. It's all part of, you know, creating an ecosystem that works in balance. In today's world, that's a winning combination, all the ingredients I think she's talking about. Absolutely. So what is happening to the land? Uh, are people buying it up, or just, just why is it disappearing so fast? I think, you know, it, it's a, it's a couple of reasons. Um, one is widespread development. I mean, if you, if I drive outside of Denver, as an example, mm -hmm. and yeah. ranches are being eaten up by developers left and right. Exactly. And you know, for the, for the ranching families who have had these parcels of land in their family for years, you know, it's an economic strain at some point where ranching doesn't become a viable income for the family. So they are and, driven to do this. Right. Exactly. They and must do it for survival many times. They do it for survival. They do it because kids have, you know, decided they're not going to go into the ranching business and they're going to go into the big cities. You know, the way of the cowboy mm -hmm. started disappearing after World War II. We talk about that in this film. The, um, the mining issue that you touch on in the film, I think that's uranium mining. How does that correlate with this? So Dayton, Dayton will be celebrating his 25th anniversary on this beautiful 12,000 acre sanctuary. And he purchased it at 62 years old on credit cards. He took a major risk. Um, so he's your hero? He's my hero. Okay. And so he purchased this land and at the time the mineral rights were offered to him uh, and he said, well I'm never going to mine my property. I don't need to buy the mineral rights. I just want to you know, preserve the surface of the land, mm -hmm. preserve what's underneath it, mm -hmm. protect the aquifer, and the Cheyenne River, which runs in four different directions on the property. And so he said, no, I don't, I don't need the mineral rights. What he didn't know was that there's something called the split estate in the West. Mm -hmm. And even though you can own what's on the surface of the land, everything below it is for sale. Oh. And so uranium companies, uh, and this is a Canadian company, it's a multinational company, that has come in to purchase the mining rights in the Black Hills. So I, I can see the setup for a conflict here as we progress into the movie, composing the music for Running Wild. Oh. It had to be big music. It was... Uh, it was I would a, think it has to be big. <laughs> Help me here. Tell me I'm right. Even if I'm not, tell me I'm right. <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> it was... It's, it's got to be simple music, right? It's got to be a little bit of the... Oh, you would know better. It was like you would see... Like, there would be a scene. She would send me shots, like maybe of a... Uh, him walking, lonely cowboy walking, it would be. Oh, See, it's that yeah, gentle yeah. period of the time. Gentle, gentle, Maybe gentle. a slide guitar yeah. coming in. So she flew me out to meet Dayton Ohio. He's an 86-year-old cowboy, six foot five, John Wayne type hulking figure of a man. He bowled with Joe Lewis in World War II. He was wow. Slim Pickens' best friend. He's got stories. He was a photographer for Life magazine. He was a rodeo clown. So this guy's brilliant and just being around his energy oh man and he got an, an Indian name given to him by the Lakota tribe mm. protector of the ceremonies is his name and he's just a beautiful soul just to talk to and he's a raconteur the stories he has I just sit in his presence and I'm awed which uh, inspired you I'm sure for the music uh, Suzanne set us up for what we're going to see right now um, this is where Dayton first comes to the land and decides that he needs to find a place for the wild horses who are being held in captivity in the Bureau of Land Management feedlots. Okay, let's roll film. 
so I phoned my kids and told them to take over the ranch. I was going to go and find a place that I could set up as a wild horse sanctuary. People thought I was crazy to do that when I was 62. It's hard to believe that he had the energy to do that at that age, but Dayton's a man that has to have a, a quest. Once he got these horses as a quest, why well, it's taken over everything else in his life. He's done so much just to get him here. He's fought the government, he's fought the neighbors, he's fought everybody. Beautiful cinematography in this. Thank you, yes, yeah. it's been noted by many of the uh, festivals that we've been going to. Okay, I'm wrong about the music, but I'm not wrong about the scenery. It's big. It's big. <laughs> it okay. is. Oh, the cameraman, uh, the guy who shot it, Morrow, he's, he's fantastic, lives in New York, and he's worked with Suzanne on so many projects in there. And again, tell us when we can see it. You can see it tomorrow, which is the 27th of February at 9 a.m. at the Harkins Theater in Sedona, mm -hmm. and again on the 1st of March, which is Friday, mm -hmm. at 1220. Okay. What kind of an audience are you looking for with this? A broad audience and also an audience that really appreciates the protection of the environment, people who love horses, people who love cowboy stories. Ah, and don't we all? <laughs> don't Absolutely. we all? There's we romance about that. Poppy, Gene, and Roy. <laughs> I used to listen to you on the radio, by the way. Well, thank you. Thank so, you. Many times, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you can become an effective parent. You stay right there.